And I was sitting there watching Raw on Monday night, and, you know, it was kind of refreshing. You had a Diva segment where the Divas got mic time. Not only that, they ran into the top of the second hour, that one-hour main event slot that I talk about a lot, and then got time past that. And then you've got the introduction of three of the NXT four, and you've got all types of pandemonium and chaos. You've got Stephanie McMahon thrown into the mix, setting this all up. <clears throat> and it, it was refreshing, I suppose, and I wasn't surprised that a lot of people were going to enjoy this, that a lot of people were going to get their internet rocks off to this. And lo and behold, wouldn't you know, that's exactly what happened. You know, so many people have been eagerly anticipating Charlotte and Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks and at some point in time Bailey too, all coming up to the main roster because by God, all the crap they've done on NXT in that Divas division has been so outstanding that it only makes sense that they'll come up to the WWE main roster and they'll shake shit up. The WWE all of a sudden believes in equality. They're going to give the Divas a chance, and by God, this is a big indicator of bigger and better things to come for the Divas division going forward. Oh my Christ, women are going to be big stars, they're going to be major players, the Attitude Era is fucking back, and all types of shit. Yeah, and I sit there and I truly wonder, what happens more? Do I complain about WWE shit more? Or do you guys overreact and overrate shit more? Seriously. You could probably say that I complain a little bit more, and that's fair. I own that. But I don't think I complain with the same veracity as to which many of you overreact to and overrate so many damn things involving the WWE product. It's like every time you overreact to something, or at least in my opinion overreact to something, or you overrate something, you know, it's like I, I come on here and I try to talk some sense into you and I try to remind you about, you know, not making the same damn mistake over and over and over again. And then when the same result happens, you continue to make the same mistake, expect the results to be any different, and you ultimately always end up being disappointed. I just don't get it. I realize you don't have much right now with the WWE product, and that's a simple fact. And the ratings are reflecting that. Just the overall interaction when it comes to talking about WWE and Raw and the product in general. There's not a lot there right now, so you got to grab onto something. you got to hold on to something because, again, you don't have a lot. You really, truly don't. It, that's just the way it is. But, you know, even as I'm sitting there watching that segment last night, there were several things that bothered me. Number one is that all of a sudden now, because of what Serena Williams has done and the Women's World Cup team, now all of a sudden we want to treat women like they fucking matter in the WWE. You know, this is nothing more than just a weak, pathetic, short-term attempt to pander and try to say, hey, look at us, we matter too. And the WWE is only doing what they always do now, which is instead of being innovators, they're imitators and cheap, kind of pathetic imitators at that. The next thing that bothered me about it is the fact that NXT is Triple H's brainchild. NXT is Triple H's baby. So why the fuck is Stephanie McMahon on television introducing these ladies? What the hell does she have to do anything with it? When in the hell has Stephanie McMahon ever really cared about equality for the women in WWE? And that's what makes it even more disappointing. Somebody who someday will be by default because Vince can't live forever. You wouldn't think. Although you see the movie Selfless, you see those previews with Ben Kingsley and freaking Ryan Reynolds and you picture Vince McMahon doing that type of shit, you'll assume at some point in time the son of a gun will be six feet under and Stephanie's going to be the chairman and CEO of the company. You would think for a woman in a position that she's in that she would want to see women be represented better and that they would be featured better and it would be a better climate for those women, especially knowing that she's got three fucking daughters of her own. you think she would want to set a good example for them, and a good example via the WWE product. 
But now all of a sudden she just sits there and she cares about this shit and give me a fucking break. And furthermore, what always aggravates me about anything involving Stephanie McMahon is it's like Stephanie McMahon always has to be the hero. She always has to be the one out on top. This isn't about you. It's about them. And I hey, resent the fact that they put Stephanie in this position where she could be thought of as the hero for bringing these divas out. Why couldn't they just come out on their own? Or at least, if anything else, if they were going to be brought up by anybody, wouldn't it make sense if Triple H was the one that did it? Since we all know who's running the NXT show. I'm just saying. And then even when it comes to all of this, you know, the whole thing was about Paige couldn't have anybody to have her back. So then she's got Charlotte and Becky Lynch coming to help her, but then you bring in uh, Sasha Banks with Tamina and Naomi, and you've got like this big three-on-three-on-three -on -three -on -three type of freaking battle. And, you know, at this point in time, frankly, it's not like the writing's any fucking good anyways. We probably could use more Crash TV on Raw. As you could say, the weakness with Crash TV is that there's too much payoff, there's too little buildup, uh, writing can really suffer well. There's not build up to shit anyways. The writing is terrible, so why not give us more shocking moments? At least, if anything else, they gave us something. But all of a sudden now, all this crazy talk about what this means for the Divas division and that WWE is giving Divas a chance, and these girls are going to come up and shake shit up, and they're going to wreck that fucking Divas division. They're going to be taken seriously. They're going to become big stars, and da-da-da-da-da. Give me a fucking break. Remember when y'all was saying that shit about A.J. Lee? How'd that work out? I mean, really, truly, how did that work out? What did A.J. Lee ever really do? She did a lot of dumb shit, was put in some dumb situations and some bad, dumb dick storylines. And then she ultimately graduated to becoming just another WWE diva. It's exactly what she became. She didn't stand out. She didn't do anything special. She was just more of the same. And remember when Paige was supposed to sit there and be the anti-diva, and she was supposed to do this, and she was supposed to do that? Or well, a character does dumb shit. Half the time, she doesn't even get an entrance. If she does get time on television, half the time, it's barely any television time at all. Hardly ever any microphone work. Oh, and she comes out and she screams and that! just like the standard operating procedures for most WWE divas. So let me get this straight. Your hero before AJ Lee didn't really do anything to help the divas division, did she? Did she? Exactly. Your new anti-diva, your new hero Paige, was supposed to come on the scene and just make things instantly so much better. And has she? Has she? The answer is no. So when the bluest of blue fucks makes you think that all of a sudden... Charlotte, Becky Lynch, and Sasha Banks, or any other damn diva, is going to make any damn bit of difference. Seriously. You expect me to believe that all of a sudden this company is going to give a shit about their women. It has been years since they've really truly given a shit about their women. And even when they did give a shit, they didn't give that much of a shit. They just knew that these girls were getting some of the best ratings that they could get, and they were selling a lot of calendars and this type of shit. You get what I'm saying. The Trish is the leaders of the world, what have you. They would treat them like a star to a certain degree, but they wouldn't necessarily always go all the way with them because it was still a man's world, and they thought that's what ultimately mattered most. But you look at this company now, you know, you got, I'm sure people are going to talk about, oh, this is the female shield. Or you bring up Bailey, and it's going to be the four horsewomen of the WWE, and it's going to be all for all spectacular. If the writing still sucks, which it does, if they don't feature them any differently, which they probably won't, they don't have any long-term plans for them, which again, with it being WWE, they probably don't, and they have no long-term vision for what they're going to do with them because they probably don't. What the fuck difference is it going to make? How many times do we have to sit here and see, Oh my God, this is awesome. Oh my God, this means so many good things. And then three months later, Oh, well, they screwed the, that one. Oh, well, they fucked the boat on that one. What the hell makes you think that it's going to be any different with these NXT Divas? I mean, seriously. 
I mean, maybe you can lock Vince and Kevin Dunn in a freaking broom closet for 20 minutes every week so that way you can give these girls a chance. But if you don't put them in stories that matter, if you don't develop their characters, if you don't feature them like they matter, then it's not going to fucking matter how much talent they have. And even what I've said about A.J. Lee and Paige is not personal towards A.J. Lee or Paige. The simple fact of the matter is who in the bluest of blue fucks could succeed in that toxic wasteland of a WWE creative environment as a diva? The answer is absolutely no one. The only reason Nikki Bella's succeeding right now, while I think she's improved and gotten better, yes, is let's face it. One, they've had the belt on her long enough that they won't wipe AJ Lee off the record books, which is probably their whole goal. And number two, she's fucking Cena. And I don't give a shit what anybody says. That most certainly isn't hurting her position in the freaking WWE. But now all of a sudden, AJ Lee couldn't get it done. Paige couldn't get it done. And improved Bella Twins couldn't get it done. But... Becky Lynch and Charlotte and Sasha Banks are going to save the day. And this company magically is going to give Divas a chance. They're going to do all these... Wait a second. How many months have we even been talking about fucking give Divas a chance? Y'all still talking about it like this is a damn thing. It's almost like it's a rib. It's almost like deep down maniacal Vince is sitting backstage and be like, How can I fuck with them nerds this week? What's going to get some more of these dweebs to subscribe to the network? I know, Hunter. Bring out the NXT Divas. It's like he's ribbing it. It's like this company gets off on this shit at this point in time. They'll tease you, they'll tease you, they'll tease you. And then they'll take it away from you. And everybody else just kind of blends in. Nobody gets over. And it's the same old shit all over again. I mean, who in the fuck do they really make stars on the men's side, frankly? And you're expecting them to make several big stars on the female side? I don't know what happened. I mean, I get the part about getting caught up in it because you don't have a lot to get caught up in. I understand the excitement level because these are talented ladies that have done some good things at NXT. But they're coming into a different type of environment and landscape trying to appeal to a broader audience. It's not necessarily going to guarantee success. And I don't understand after so long why so many people are so willing to give WWE such a free pass and it's like every time they do this to you, you predictably fall into the freaking trap to, to where it's kind of borderline pathetic. You would think at some point in time, you'd wisen up and you'd smarten up and you'd be like, hey, you know, I'll believe it when I see it. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me God knows how many freaking times and shame on me because I'm the ding-dong dumb dick. If you enjoyed last night's segment, great. There were things to enjoy about it. Now, please don't sit there and expect me to believe and this is a great indicator of awesome things to come for the Divas Division. How many times have we been down this freaking road? Think about how many of you naively and, frankly, idiotically believed earlier in the year that the Give Divas a Chance shit was going to make any type of difference or matter at all. Here's AJ Lee tweeting it, and she's fucking quitting the company anyways. Ah, oh, Christ almighty. <laughs> when it comes to the WWE now, I wish more of you would believe, be in the believe it when I see it mode and be honest with yourselves and be honest about the product to stop trying to fool yourselves because, at least I would hope, you're not really fooling anybody and frankly, you're not fooling me and I really don't think you're even fooling yourself. You know you're being set up for disappointment and yet you're still going to let the WWE do it to you anyway.